Wednesday. Tonight we're going to discuss places to camp. I'm really excited about that. This is episode 26. That is a half a year, ladies and gentlemen, of doing What's Up Wednesday. Thank you for joining us on the live stream, and thank you for joining on the replay. Got a big show for you tonight, like we do every week. Um, however, we have no guests this week, but I'm coming at you from Chicagoland in Kankakee, which is about an hour south of Chicago, a uh, town that... Um, we used to live in um, a number of years ago. We used to run a bed and breakfast down here. An old Victorian house, pretty cool. Super curious, where are you watching from? We've got folks coming in from uh, New York State already, which is great. And Illinois, just up the road in Byron and Albany. Those are our friends uh, Beyond Intention. We got a little announcement with them uh, tonight, so stay tuned for that. So let me know where you're watching from. And the format we like to use is right here. Uh, this is three asterisks followed by three question marks and then ask your question. That helps me find uh, your question more quickly and we want to get your questions in early. We always seem to have a rush of questions at the end. This only runs for an hour. We're going to do um, viewer question of the week tonight at 15 minutes after the hour and then sprinkle in the other content bits. Um, uh, throughout the uh, throughout the rest of the hour. So if you're in interested in uh, where to camp and how I kind of roll with that, you'll want to stay um, to uh, to 15 minutes after the hour for sure. Hey, stay the whole show, right? <laughs> um, again, where are you watching from? Very important for me. And if we have folks coming in from countries we haven't seen in a while, I will call that out um, in our next show. Um, so here's uh, California coming in. Hey, Karen, good to see you. There's KK kayak that's cool wisconsin so bummed i'm not going to get to wisconsin this go around um and his louisville love louisville oh my gosh i just fell in love a uh, new lou got a video coming up on new lou oh my gosh um so great uh, virginia awesome streamwood i think that's kind of down by kankakee area yes no maybe i'm not really sure um and here's mike um I saw some some of these are familiar names that you're actually joining us on some upcoming things. So let's uh, let's keep moving here. So um, this is kind of the big deal. Um, so starting next week, um, running Route 66 Chicago to LA, and we're going to do van camping, van uh, caravans, van meetups along the way. And I think Mike Trower, I saw uh, you getting a, an event. Uh, bright ticket to that and Jane I think you folks are coming to some of that too hey if you want to join me on portions of Route 66 um, go to my website go small live large .com, and all the information is there and I'm not, I can't plan too far out ahead so some, some of you have asked about uh, you know New Mexico and California that's weeks away so I don't know we're gonna run this as far out as we can without getting overly ambitious um, so we can stick to the program but I'm just really really pumped and we are seriously on the move um, starting next uh, next week. And I can't wait to share this route plan with you. I'm just curious. Anybody heard of Camo Dave before? He's a YouTuber. He's a YouTuber commenting on Digital Nomads and other crazy channels. Um, we got a little spotlight on Camo Dave. Um, Audience Angel um, Terry uh, from Florida uh, shouted out that uh, Camo Dave was kind of featuring uh, Go Small Live Large. And and my burnout video and some other stuff. Uh, if you haven't checked out Camo Dave, check him out. But he was pretty um, happy about my route plan. I need your help. I need your help. Um, some of you have uh, offered some of these types of things, and I just want to put it out there publicly that um, I do need your help. Uh, let me zoom in here before you can see what I'm talking about. Is uh, Van Burees. That's what I call a, a camp out where we get a few a few of us together. And I need some host sites that are not um, RV parks or state camps because I have very little control over that. But if you know somebody that has acreage, um, we can kind of you know boondock camp for a couple of days. That would be so cool. Um, if you have access or knowledge of uh, kind of behind the scenes tours as I'm going down and around the country, I would love to uh, chat with you about uh, behind the scenes tours, van builders. Super interested in van builders. I've got some coming up for you, some uh, some van builder tour videos that I think you're going to love. And if you know anybody that's doing van builds, whether it's a DIY, do it yourself, or on a commercial basis, I would love to know that. And of course, um, audience angels. As we roll around, um, many of you have offered places to stay. So as I kind of update my itinerary, which is now on my front page, by the way, although it still says Toledo, Ohio, I'm in Chicago land. Whoops. Um, it would be great for you to maybe drive away for the night. Hey, let's uh, have a have an adult beverage. Just share some stories. Um, I don't need anything except some space uh, in your property. So again, reaching out to you there. And that is also uh, goes for the uh, Go Small Live Large viewer recommendation at Gmail. 
Um, that's where you can chime in for some of the cool things um, on this uh, show, like recommendation of the week, song of the week, pet peak of the pet pick of the week, and other things like that. Hey, next week we've got Coachman. Yes, Nick, the GM, general manager of uh, Forest Rivers. A coachman division, the Class Bs. He is the coolest cat. Uh, he's going to be live on the show answering your questions. So if you have any interest in a in a van, a Class B RV, a tiny motorhome, in a Ford Transit, uh, a, a ProMaster, which is what this is, that's the Nova, or a Galleria, which is on the Sprinter chassis, you will want to join us next week. He is really excited to be here, and I can't tell you how excited I am to have him here. That's a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. How often do you actually get to ask the GM? Of Forest Rivers Coachman Class B Division, a question. Unless you go to an RV show, probably not going to happen. Um, uh, so join us next week, the 14th, 6 p.m. Central. And upcoming special guests. Look at this. In the house tonight, we have Beyond Intentions. This is uh, Chris and Cassandra in their Turnvado 59G. We announced last week that we are doing some guests of van owners. Fairly new. Um, these folks, I think, are seven months in, and they're the coolest couple that, with our cat, Benny. And some people um, are just a few weeks, literally, in. And I think it, was, it would be fascinating for you to interact and me to interact with them, sharing their experiences. So that's what this is all about. Still working on Storyteller. Um, it's a little slower than I would like, but we're working on that for you. And boy, do we have events coming up. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen, seriously. This weekend, uh, Saturday, July 10, in Forest Park, uh, Illinois, which is just 10 miles due west of downtown Chicago, we're doing a, a roundup at Louis Grill. It's a 1950s uh, style diner in my old uh, hometown or old hometown of um, Forest Park. Join us for that. And then the caravan. Uh, we're leaving Pontiac, Illinois, um, Thursday morning and caravanning to Springfield. And then at Springfield, if you can't join us for the caravan, which is all of us kind of traveling together, wouldn't that be cool? Four or five or six vans all traveling together. Um, we're doing a roundup in Springfield at the Springfield Beer Company. It's also a Harvest Host site. Um, I'm taking up one of their spots, just a heads up, but if you want to stay the night, check with them. You do need to be a Harvest Host member. Let's see, what else we got going? Um, stay informed, so important. My website, yes. Instagram, if you're not following me on Instagram, I post videos are daily, you'll never see on YouTube. And sign up for the e newsletter. Two newsletters a week, all about this stuff, the events, what's coming up next on our route, and it would just be a delight to have you there. Don't sell your information, I don't share it with anybody, it's just uh, between you and me. And um, really excited about that. Recent video van tour, you got to see an embassy RV. Thank you, Bob and Susan, for sharing your cool van, right? And this is a video coming up this Saturday. Where is Shore Power? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you have your van and you don't have these items in it, you are in a pickle. If you were in the state park that I was in in Michigan, um, I'll give you a hint. The Shore Power, the utility pole, was 51 feet away from the van. And that's this. We I walk you through how to solve that problem, so you won't, don't want to miss that. Um, and this is our question of the week. Uh, uh, this is from uh, Patrick. He is talking about after retirement going full time. His biggest concern is finding places to stay and wonders if I have some wisdom. Yup. That's our question of the week tonight. We're going to dive into that. So lots, lots going on. I see some questions coming in here. So let's jump into that. And just a delight to have you in here. This show is growing um, in leaps and bounds, not only the live stream, but on the replays, which is really exciting. And it's getting some attention from some other folks, which I think is really awesome. More on that later. Here's uh, Beyond Attention. Chris and Cassandra are going to be our guests next week. So I'm really excited. Thanks again, you two, for joining us for that. California, we talked about that. I saw the Live, Work, Live, I thought, had a question um, right here. Do you anticipate a bunch of used Travato L models available in the fall? Curious why you call out L in particular. Um, there's a Travato um, G and a K two different floor plans, and the L is a designation with a Volta lithium system. Um, I don't, we kind of talked about this last week a little bit, and I, it's a great question, glad you asked. I don't think you're going to see a glut of vans. You might find a glut of other RVs, you know, shipments that are all-time records across the board, and um, I just don't think you're going to see a bunch of, um, of vans, uh, because the use case is just so tremendous. Daily drivers, you know, construction, um, worksite offices, uh, real t real estate office, uh, you know, mobile office, um, camping, tailgating. I, I don't think you're going to see a bunch of um, price drops or gluts on vans. Uh, I really don't. And on lithium, I think the trend is up on lithium. I think people are figuring out how enabling that is. So I don't think you're going to see a glut of those either. And in fact, what I've been experiencing, as I hear from you, um, and even some people have reached out to me, um, I think the lithium equipped coaches are going to get a higher price tag, better resale value, because it's the future. 
whereas a generator might be a little more legacy. So, um, Mike, I think you're going to join us for one of our uh, in Oklahoma, right? Um, and maybe I saw you want an event right there. Cape Cod, look at this in the house. That is so great. There's Bob Scott. <laughs> hey, Bob Scott. Uh, oh, you got your embassy. Congratulations. That is super, super fun for you. Oh, wow. you got to be so excited. Um, Schomburg, that's outside of Chicago. Let's see some questions here. Juneau, Alaska. Todd's up in Juneau. Wow, that's crazy. That's one place I really have very little interest in going is Alaska. Get asked all the time. Um, I'm an urban cowboy. And not much urban up in Alaska. A bunch of moose and things running around. Um, okay, so MP's got a good question here. And we're going to do our uh, viewer question of the week here in just a few more minutes. So hang tight, folks. Let's see. MP says, many public campsite reservation systems designate some sites for tent versus RV, but you drive up to them. Would you be kicked out if you stayed in a short van and didn't set up a tent? Um, interesting question. I would say, um, I'd say commercial uh, RV parks, like a KOA, something like that. They really... Um, want you to stay, the franchise ones that I've stayed in, um, won't let you stay in a, in a tent site, specifically designated for, for tents. I have stayed in tent sites in my van in uh, non-franchised uh, RV parks. Now, if you're talking about you know state parks, um, they too kind of designate uh, either way. Um, so I would probably check carefully with the um, with the reservation, you know, office that you're, uh, I would even call them if it's not super obvious on the on the site, because the the trouble is all the other RV sites might be sold out, and tent sites are the only ones that are available. And if you show up, they may turn you away, and that would be a big bummer. So it, I'd say it kind of varies. Um, we we in lithium equipped coaches can stand a tent site very easily. We just plug in, if at all. Um, in the 15 amp circuit, just dial down your voltage coming into the, the amps coming into the rig, and so we can get away with that. I actually like tent sites because they're surrounded by nature, not a bunch of RVs. So great question. Um, you have to do your homework there. I'll think a little bit on that. Uh, Michelle is getting her Travado <laughs> next week. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. Um, that has got to be just um, so so exciting for you. Um, 2021 too. Uh, that is so amazing. Uh, you're welcome on the tips. Uh, Hampton, New York. Thank you. Uh, um, so Live, Work, Live says um, Matt and Dave Vans in Colorado. Let me uh, actually take a screenshot of that quick. Uh, that's a good point. I'll look them up. Um, what I'm finding with the, um, the non-big uh, builders, uh, kind of like Embassy RV, you know, or, uh, I'm the Embassy Envoy. A lot, a lot of us are. Um, but they're paid partner with, with embassies. They just really put in way more creative work and maybe better better build quality as well. So I just love to share their passion and their craftsmanship. Um, so thanks for that. Um, uh, Dave and Matt Vance. Okay, I think I got that. Thank you. Um, Nashville. Love Nashville. Um, we're doing an uh, event with Embassy uh, the first weekend in December. So mark your... Um, Mark your calendars for that. Okay, Australia, look at that, in the house. Oh my gosh, okay, that's gonna get the award for next week, being uh, the flag of Australia put up there. Um, so great. Uh, let's keep those questions coming in, folks. Uh, I know you got them. And on the vans, on um, systems, um, and uh, let me ask, answer Jane's and we'll get right into the viewer question of the week. And I think that might jog some, some questions. So Jane wants to know, Jane, good to see you. Thanks for joining our uh, roundup um, last month now, right? Can you believe it's July? Year's half over. How do you like Lily's lift after many months and miles? Any difference in driving, feel, or handling? That is an awesome question. And I love L-U-V, L-O-V-E, my lift. I am so glad I did that. And thanks to Kevin Martin. They're going to wake up for starting that, um, get me involved with that. Off Highway Vans is who did the van lift in Salt Lake City. It's expensive, but I tell you, it is just, outside the wrap, it's probably the best thing I've done to the van. Um, no difference in driving. I would say it's slightly stiffer, if anything. Um, no wear unnecessarily on the tires that I would experience differently. Nothing on the suspension to report. And we've had that for quite a while now, right? I would say probably... Um, God, it was October last year, right? So it had to be at um, you know, 50,000 miles, something like that. I got 73,000 on it now. 
and um, so never no difference in driving uh, no difference in, in feel um, definitely up higher I like that um, and handling no real difference there and I would do it again so I would do it in a, in a minute I would go back to the same firm um, off highway vans in Salt Lake it was three grand to get it done it added about three inches to the overall lift um, or the, the, the clearance underneath and why that is important if even if I'm not out you know running around uh, mountain roads is because the obstacles in an urban environment are real the ground clearance um, of curbs parking stops really deep driveways um, it's a real deal and while I didn't really damage my uh, rig prior to the lift I was uber cautious about it and now I'm a little more gutsy and just having those extra three inches make such a difference great question so with that let me take a look here and let's um, talk about the question of the week let me bring this on the screen for you uh, thank you uh, whoops um, so here we go so this is uh, again Patrick um, get close to retirement wants to know um, he wants to go full-time so uh, biggest concern his biggest concern is finding places to stay got any wisdom so I do um, so this may be, kind of be you know mileage may vary on this I am NOT a dis dispersed camper what the heck is that that's where you roll out into BLM Bureau of Land Management land largely out in the West and stay for days or weeks in the bush with the bears and the and the moose and whatever else is running around out there because I just it just creeps me out now if I was with some of you crazies out there that might be different but the two times I tried it I really enjoyed the stars I enjoyed the sunsets I enjoyed the sunrises but it uh, wasn't for me so I don't have a lot of advice on dispersed camping on BLM land out in the West however um, I do have some some uh, suggestions on these things so let me kind of zoom in here for you and I'm pretty firm on this and if you've been of our, our um, roundups lately we have actually talked about this I am doing less street camping these days um, less Walmart parking these days uh, I am doing more Cracker Barrel parking these days street camping as I call it is when I am um, staying on a, on a city street maybe in a historic district or something like that um, I've had some instances lately like in the last six months two or three times three times when not the police but other crazies are kind of pound on the van in the middle of the night and I don't like that it really made me nervous so I'm doing less street camping if I'm in a paid lot I feel more safe than actually being on the street and let me zoom back in here I was just spent the last few weeks in Michigan and see the top sign there on the left uh, that says no parking on the street 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. and I saw this all over the place in Michigan it's like every town I was in so street camping not even possible you get a ticket um, and then Walmart's is the middle one there um, no overnight parking I'm seeing that more and more I haven't stayed in a Walmart in probably a year but I am uh, really loving Cracker Barrel so um, places to stay Cracker Barrel would be on my list they're in uh, kind of urbanish areas freeways are right next door um, I always like to support them so I buy their $7 egg and ham situation um, so that's one idea um, Walmart's call in advance but I'm just seeing a lot more no uh, none of that um, places to stay you probably think I talk about this too much and I do because what I'm doing currently is I am running four to five even six days using using harvest hosts and another program we'll talk about in just a second this is what you're seeing um, as a member of a harvest host uh, you get access to this database let me zoom in here for you that gives you um, it's like 1800 places to stay wineries breweries uh, museums golf courses and every one of those represents one night I can stay and if you look at the smaller image here what you're seeing there is you can actually route plan so this is from Cincinnati to Chicago and you can see the harvest hosts along the way and that is really cool um, the epi self-contained some don't wear run generators but I run again four to five nights a week I've just come out of this uh, from um, from Michigan and um, I overlay this with this next program which is called boondockers welcome let me zoom in here for you so boondockers welcome is each of these little dots and these are private property largely are veers either current or former 
And again, what I do is I kind of overlay those two. So I look at where I'm going, what's my trajectory. I look at Harvest Host, I look at Boondockers Welcome. What are the restrictions? How many nights can I stay? Boondockers Welcome, many of them let you stay up to five nights, which is really awesome. And they're oftentimes in urban environments, which is pretty cool. And then on that fifth or sixth day um, to do tank duty, I usually go find a KOA. I like KOAs a lot. And that allows me just to sit still, plug into shore power, and do tank duty fill up, do laundry. So that's what I'm doing currently. Um, smattering of Cracker Barrels, but running Harvest Hosts, Boondockers Welcome, KOA, and it's given me a real rhythm that I'm really enjoying. I used to, again, street camp a lot and paid parking lots a lot. And this has just given me some comfort that the last couple of times when somebody is knocking on the van, not, not police, uh, it scared me enough to really rejigger this and it's really working out quite well. Um, so if you're not a Harvest Host member and a Boondockers Welcome member, give those careful consideration. Um, if you don't want to save any money, go right to their sites and sign up. If you uh, want to save some money, and I make a buck or two off it, uh, go to my site, sign up through me. It gets 15% off on uh, Harvest Host. And I think the other cool thing about it is it takes you places you wouldn't go. You see things you wouldn't necessarily do, and it helps you make some friends along the way, certainly with Boondockers Welcome. It's just a really lovely uh, program. So places to stay, yeah, those are what I'm doing currently. Now you might be saying, well, Scott, that's nice. What about um, state parks and county parks and, and national parks and things like that? And those are all important places um, to, to stay as well. But I have had mixed results, quite honestly, with some of those. And when I say mixed results, what I'm talking about is the national parks are really filled up, <laughs> especially this summer, OMG. And um, they have really restrictive policies and you gotta really book them out far in advance. And I just, again, I've had better luck with county parks and fairgrounds and state parks. At least you can kind of see your, 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 your camp spot. So I would sprinkle those in. But if I'm kind of on a, on a movement pattern, like we're coming up with Route 66, this is what I'm gonna do. So hopefully that answers your, your question fairly directly. Um, again, some of you have a different way of doing this, but Patrick, this is what I found. Um, this is my 29th month of continuous living in my van. I found this to be a really nice way to go. Now here's something kind of interesting. Um, Harvest Hosts, while it's technically free overnight camping, um, what I found is because they're usually in a place, um, bring it back on screen, sort of like a, a brewery, or a winery, or a distillery, I usually sample that. So my, my free overnight camping can be kind of expensive. Um, like, I don't know, 25 or 50 bucks, right? That's as much as a KOA. And what's nice about, again, the, the Boondockers Welcome is they really don't charge you anything. They might say, hey, if you want to plug in, um, it's five bucks a night. Okay, um, I don't need that because I have a Volta system, so I don't really need that unless it's super hot, then I'll take you up on that. Um, and they, many of them let you fill up on water. So Boot Dockers is really lessening my dollar spend, which I have found to be super, super helpful. And again, if you're going to do the uh, the KOA thing, sign up for their value uh, program, I can't remember what it's called, you save 10% per night. So if you're, it's 50 bucks for the campsite and um, you save $5, so it's 45 bucks, it actually adds up really fast. Let me tell you. Um, so hopefully that helps. And um, you probably have some other suggestions. Um, like friends are awesome. Family is awesome. We call that um, mooch docking. Um, and for me, I can do like audience angels. I just stayed um, with the gentleman in, um, in White House. I think it was White House, Michigan outside of Detroit and uh, some, some of you are have space and you can offer that uh, we kind of talked about that earlier and if you do have space hey you want to meet up uh, that's a great way to, to, to offer your driveway then we can meet face to face which I love doing that it was so great it was so great so that's uh, that's how we roll let me know if you have any other questions about that and uh, we can certainly talk further about that let me go back to the comments and the questions because those are rolling in here so hopefully that was uh, helpful Patrick and um, there's lots of choices um, worst case, you just roll into a cracker barrel and overnight and leave early in the morning and kind of reset your, your situation there. Um, Greg Johnson, working on your video, man, so stay tuned. Wheeling, I love wheeling, so cool. Um, so Todd's saying, he's in Alaska, saying that the, the moose are lazy. <sighs> yeah, lazy moose, I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so this is a great one. So uh, Lola says, Cracker Barrel is my favorite spot for one night. Uh, Second is Pilot. Um, you know, I haven't stayed at truck stops too often. Early one, I was getting going, 
um, cracker barrels. I will say with the harvest hosts and boondockers welcome, you need to make some plans in advance. Many of them, uh, you can even do same day, but many of the harvest host sites, you can make an online reservation and never, never talk to anybody. And it just, again, gives me a great deal of comfort to show um, know where I'm going. Part of that's helping plan for the channel. So yeah, Cracker Barrel is really, really great, and they're quiet. And um, and and if you're going to use Cracker Barrel, please let's all be polite, let's uh, be courteous, let's not leave messes. I think that's what screwed up um, Walmart's. And um, uh, so this is a good point. So Lizzie says yes. Harvest Host acquired um, Boondockers Welcome. So I assume at some point those will merge. Um, but right now it's I think it's 40 bucks uh, for Boondockers. I think it's 140 for um, Harvest Hosts uh, dollar wise. So sign up now. That may change. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but great point. Tucson, Arizona. I love Tucson. Can't wait to get back to Tucson. Let's see. Uh, uh, beyond attention here is a, a Boondocking weapon trailheads and parking lots for dispersed camping areas. Um, usually very private. Good to know. Um, good to know. Let's see. So Jim's got a question here. Uh, I've had a few videos in my YouTube feed recently for Dometic uh, multi-volt air conditioning system. Any opinion on those? Uh, the RTX 2000 specifically compared to the Coleman Mach 10. You know, I don't have any specific uh, information. I would need to do some homework. 12 volt is cool because you don't have to have your inverter on. Um, maybe those that have an embassy RV, Terry's pretty good on a, a split system using 12 volt, but I am not specifically uh, up to speed on Dometic. We'll have to do some homework on that, uh, Jim, so I apologize. I don't have a specific um, question for you, but I would, I'll be all in for a 12 volt, um, so you don't have to run your inverter. My inverter is huge in a Volta system, Pure 3 lithium system. It's 3600 watts. It consumes about 200, 250 watts just sitting idle. So if you can save that by just running um, 12 volt, that would be amazing. Great questions tonight. This is fun. Um, we'll cover some more topics here in about 10 more minutes. Um, viewer uh, recommendations of the week. So let's see. Speaking of Harvest Host, Steve wants to know, what do you all do with the wine and stuff that you have to buy? What percentage of the golf course um, uh, you call require you to play golf? Those are great questions. I had some, some, some thoughts on that. So what do you do with all the wine and stuff uh, you buy? So if you've um, seen me in the last six months, you know that um, I've been collecting quite a, a whiskey and bourbon collection. Um, I would prefer to stay at a distillery. I love wineries. Um, craft beer, um, I usually consume that on site. Uh, maybe take a growler with me. Uh, the wine is tough to store, so I really don't buy bottles of wine unless I'm gonna just keep them for a day or two because um, it's, it's just an odd size uh, container, frankly, in the RV. And I prefer white over red. Red gives me a headache. And um, I've come up with a clever system. I'm actually working on a video right now. Um, so, but if it's if it's a spirit, uh, like a whiskey or a bourbon, I have, I store those in the cabin over the bed. And I've actually come up with an alternative to that video coming up. Um, so I do carry the the bourbon, the whiskey with me. I have quite a collection now. I probably have close to ten ten bottles. I would say ten different types, uh, which is really great. Um, so watch for that video coming up. Um, golf courses, great question. I don't play golf. Tried it once. I, I just didn't get it. I, um, I've only had two or three say you got to play golf. Um, most of them have a um, you know, 19th hole, as they call it, a bar and grill, the clubhouse. And I use those a lot. I love the golf courses. I really, really love the golf courses. Um, you buy a burger and a beer or two, and it's really inexpensive because it's food and beverage for their members, not the general public, although the general public is welcome in most cases. So it's really inexpensive. You can run up a very small bar tab, you know, 15, 20 bucks, and a really great meal. Um, and what's cool is that the clubhouse has air conditioning or heat and Wi-Fi, yes. So I actually seek those out because I can go inside and hang out for a couple of hours and just do video channel work and I really, really love those. So only a few times have they required golf, in which case I might call them and just say, hey, here's my situation, I'll play golf, do you have a you know, clubhouse? And can I, you know, instead of golf, just you know, get a burger and a couple of beers? And I think I've only had one say, no, you gotta play golf, in which case, okay, no problem. Um, great question. I love the golf courses. Have you ever seen a golf course in a bad neighborhood? No. And have you seen golf courses way out in the middle of nowhere? 
sometimes, but oftentimes are within an urban environment, which is really great for me. Whereas a vineyard might be way out. Breweries, uh, those are typically in an urban environment. The farms, you know, rural. Museums, I've even seen some places now where they're doing like um, museums. There was one, there was a tire store. That was kind of interesting. Um, there's another one that was really kind of off the, it was like a, um, it, it wasn't a Dave, Dave Buster's, is that what it is? Kind of those game, game center things. Um, it was similar to that, and it looked really cool. Um, so hopefully you're finding this helpful tonight. If so, give it a thumb up. I just That helps others find the the channel, find this. And uh, yeah, we are um, looking for more questions. Great questions tonight, as always. Um, this is a great question here. So MP's got a beautiful question. And that is, with Boondockers Welcome, is there an expectation that you will socialize or interact a lot with the host? It really depends. Um, I kind of set those expectations right when I arrive. I always want to meet them. They surely want to meet me. And just have an understanding. So here's what's going on. Moving in and out throughout the day. Um, coming back in at night. Um, some folks want some interaction. And... Um, only a couple of times have they invited me like to, for coffee the next morning and things like that but most it's just some chit chat in the driveway or off to the side uh, the one gentleman I stayed in Boise for a couple of nights he really didn't want any interaction he just like there's your site I'm leaving to go bowling and I'll see you kind of throughout but he just didn't want to chit chat another gentleman um, we sat on his uh, he sat on his porch screened I stood outside the porch another guy he had two spots um, we chatted up for quite a bit. Uh, we got our, our whiskey out and had a whiskey chat. And um, I'm okay with that because you learn about the his story and he learns about my story. And it's kind of, you know, I, I go solo most of the time. So I don't mind finding somebody to chat with a little bit. But I think just you set those expectations up front and just have an understanding. Um, when, you, when you get the, um, you make the reservation request, they approve it and you actually get their phone number and their, um, address and you can text within the app um, and maybe they even want to text uh, on the phone as well and um, so I just I'm, I'm super polite and I'm super um, respectful that I'm on their private property so I just I kind of over communicate through text as to you know I'm, I'm rolling in late or I'm you know, gonna be gone for the day see you um, in the driveway around you know 7 p.m. something like that um, but it's really up to you and them to come to agreement on the socialization but I wouldn't expect them to invite inside and cook dinner for you. I've never had anybody do that. I'm not sure. I don't know. They often want to tour the van. So they're really curious about the van. And I love talking about Lily, as you know. So that's okay. Come on in. Um, let's see. Sherry's, uh, we had intention to talk about coffee. Love my coffee situation. Thanks to them. Uh, so here's Sherry. Got an interesting app I heard of recently. It's called it's uh, it's three bucks. Called U.S. Public Land. You can help find great uh, sites around credit national parks. I might try it out. Yeah, we might try that out. Let me take a screenshot and we'll try and capture that. Um, and what I found is on the boondocking on BLM land out out west, they're really hard to find. For me, I'm used to GPS. Right? What's your address? Da -da 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 -da, and off we go. But the BLM land roads that I was trying to find are really not well marked and uh, that might help and it might give me some more comfort that I'm in the right place uh, so thank you Sherry for that tip <laughs> always welcome to Woodstock thank you appreciate that um, uh, yeah so here's um, getting a little validation it's not really free because um, and you want to support the small businesses I'm telling you the small businesses need our support um, and these crafts people that are you know making things that are making you know, craft beer, wine. Um, if they offered you know, a tour of the distillery or the winery, a one harvest host in the Yakima Wine Valley in Washington State, I got to see how wine was actually made. And man, it makes you appreciate so much what, how much effort, time, sweat, passion goes into that glass of wine, beer, um, whiskey. And it just, it just brings it all home for me. And that's part of just supporting those folks and I always thank them. I usually send them a thank you note, actually. There's a program called Felt, and I take the picture and I write them a note, and it's all through an automated system online, and it costs me about three bucks, four bucks, and I send them a thank you note, because um, I am really serious about supporting these programs, because it's changed my life in so many ways, and that's why I talk about it all the time. It's not an infomercial, it's, it's more sharing how it's enriched me, and you try it. That's what we do here, go small, live large. 
we learn together, we share together, you decide what's the best way to roll with you. So, um, more questions? So this is a good one. So Keith has a good question here. Are apartment complex parking lots a decent option to park overnight? I would not want to be in the actual apartment complex, I don't think, um, unless it's really a vast open lot. Um, might get away with it, um, I just don't know. Now street camping on the outside, I've done that before. Uh, what's nice about apartments is that there's lots of cars coming and going and uh, being on the street in that situation, I've done that before and that's okay. Actually being inside the lot, mm, I don't know. Some people do hotels kind of the same way, just kind of going in assuming they will stay in a hotel, uh, you know, hotel parking lot. I just, you know, Catholic guilt coming out. I just don't want to be someplace where I'm not supposed to be without permission. Um, and that's again why I've just done, been using these other programs so more readily. So maybe some of you have done that. So let us know. Oak Park. Where did I see Oak Park? Hold on. Uh, Oak Park, Oak Park, where'd you go? Right here. Ken, hopefully you can join us on Saturday, sir, in Forest Park on Madison at Louis Grill. If you don't have breakfast there, you're missing it. Um, so hope to see you there, sir. Um, so let's talk about a couple other things here. And this is kind of interesting. Um, this is RV News headlines. And wait till you see this. Maybe you know about this already. Um, but Airstream now has a 4x4 six wheel adventure van. The Airstream 2022 Interstate 24X. It's adventure ready, 24 foot uh, floor plan for gear, people, storage, and advanced energy system. I couldn't find on their site specifically what it was. Uh, we also have a Volta. Um, it's got the only one that, look at that price tag, ladies and gentlemen, from $214,000. I had better make toast, coffee, and uh, self clean the whole thing for you, right? Oh my goodness. Um, but what I found kind of interesting here is it's the only one that I've seen call out specifically a sound system. And that's kind of interesting. I have two HomePods in my van, and I can't tell you what an enriching experience having music quality loud music in your van is. If you like loud music in your car, wait until you see it in a van or hear it in a van, and these guys have done it. Um, check out Airstream. Uh, I need to do some homework on this. So this makes our third uh, RV News headline with these bigger companies um, making adventure vans kind of from their existing platform. So Thor is doing the, th the Sanctuary on a Mercedes. Um, Pleasure Way was doing, oh goodness, what was theirs called? I can't remember, on a Mercedes Sprinter. And these guys are doing it on the, uh, the 170 foot extended wheelbase uh, uh, Sprinter as well. Um, so there is definitely a trend. And even if you don't take them off road, they look cool. Look at these. Oh, you got to go to their website and check this stuff out. Um, it is really a really cool uh, looking rig. Now, these things are big, but the floor plan looks pretty amazing. We'll see if we can find one on the road. Uh, my guess is they're going to be hard to find for a while. But uh, that's our RV News headline for the week. And always you can go to my website and click. It's the top link and, uh, and, and check that out yourself. Um, let's look at what else we got coming up here. And yeah, viewer recommendation we'll do in just a few minutes. We got some other great questions coming in here. Um, yeah, Jim's got a great point here. Uh, it's funny you say this, Jim. Um, if you look at the home page on my website, gosmalllivelarge.com, you will see that not every harvest host is an experience, and sometimes it is just a parking lot. <laughs> there was a. Uh, it was in Lith. Lithuania, um, Michigan. It's where Ford has a ton of plants. I couldn't believe it. Transmissions, it was all, uh, Ford uh, runs that town. And the town peddler is like a um, antique mall. So a bunch of booths, huge facility. Been there since like, like 1993 or something like that. Um, it was literally just a parking lot. But I can tell you that um, it was safe. It was quiet. It was dark-ish. Those are the kind of places I like. And I'm allowed to park there overnight. I stayed two nights, actually. Um, and a guy in a Class A stayed three nights. So it really depends. It was just a parking lot. Absolutely not glamorous. But because of the location, I was able to roll out um, the morning after I arrived, go see the Ford Museum um, in Dearborn, Michigan. And I rolled back into that same Town Peddler Harvest Host site. Um, and they're really serious about their Harvest Host sites. They give you a certificate and like a certificate of occupancy. And they give you places to, to go around there. And boy, if you have not been to the Ford Museum, I thought I was going to roll in there for a couple of hours. 
I got there opening 9.30 a.m. I didn't leave until 3.30, and I was so, so exhausted. I'm trying to uh, cobble together a little bit of a video. Um, what made it really special for me is I got to see the car that Kennedy was um, shot in. I got to see the chair Abraham Lincoln was shot in, and I got to see the uh, Rosa Parks bus. I actually sat in the same seat she sat in when she was arrested. And I was so moved. There was another lady in there with me, and I was I was literally moved to tears. If her and I had had another word or two about the experience, I would have been literally wiping tears. Um, I couldn't believe what an emotional experience that, that bus brought um, brought me to. Um, but yeah, sometimes Harvest Hose, not glamorous, but it's safe parking, and that's the point. It was nice because I didn't have to I didn't have to spend a dime. A great thing about vans is you can't load up with a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so I kind of say that going in. Um, so Michael Clark's got a good question here. Um, hey Scott, I'm in the van heading to Secret Beach, Oregon. Do you use Campendium to help you find potential campsites? Um, others have. I have not done that with a great deal of success yet. Um, because some of the reasons that we've talked about. Um, so maybe somebody can chime in here. I know some other van folks and the Russos I think have, ta have, have used this. Uh, maybe some folks here can help us out tonight. Um, I do have it at, on my iPad and my phone, uh, and maybe as we get out west, excuse me, those will be more, more relevant. So I don't have a lot of experience with that. I apologize. Hey, David, good to see you, sir. We're going to be rolling through Oklahoma City, I think, as part of uh, Route 66. We're going to be planning some uh, events there, so stay tuned. Rochester Hills, Michigan, I was just in your area, literally, like, right? Um, Romeo, what a cute town. Romeo's and then Rochester. That wasn't Hills, just Rochester, I think, right? Um... Yeah, this is a good point here. So uh, Live, Work, Live says I like the idea of wine distillery tour and then not having to drive afterwards. Yeah, some of those uh, sampling sessions can be pretty juicy. And just walking um, walking to your van or rig is really, really nice. Um, let's see, what other we got, we got in here? Uh, uh, let's see, I just thought I saw some. Uh, everybody wants to meet Scott. Yeah, it's kind of fun. You know, I just know meeting you. Um, and that's what we're doing these we're doing this road 66 we're gonna you know caravan together we're gonna um, meet uh, round up together and I'm just really really excited about it because that's what it's all about for me and um, looking for so here's a good one uh, Michael thanks for bringing this up I've actually tried this so Michael's um, suggesting how about church parking lots can't really do it on Saturday or Sunday because a lot of them have uh, services but I've actually tried calling um, churches. I haven't done it in probably about six months. I actually tried it in, in um, New Orleans, and I didn't get a reply back. Uh, maybe I was too forward with what I was trying to do, and it's like, I'm not going to bother with that. Now, there's actually, um, this was on a podcast. I think it was Mike and Jennifer Wendland. I think it was their podcast. I heard there's a another service much like Boondockers Welcome and Harvest Host that's churches. He had a very few sites in the very northeast, but that is a lovely idea, um, and I can't remember the name of it. You'd have to, we'd have to Google search it, but they were asking for a donation for the church and stay there. You know, if it's ten bucks, um, it's probably cheaper than a winery, um, and there's churches everywhere, and their lots are empty on weeknights, right? Um, so why not? I wouldn't just roll in without getting some permission. So that's a good, in fact, let me take a screenshot of that. That's a good idea. Let's test drive that experiment. Michael, thank you for bringing that up. That is really, really great. Uh, so here's Jeep Sahara talking about the um, 24X Airstream uh, MSRP 215. Okay, so we, uh, we know what MSRP, uh, you can just kind of knock a whole bunch off just right off the bat. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a huge van. Um, the Galleria by Coachman. Um, I have to be honest with you. I fell in love with that that floor plan. It was the Galleria 24A, so it's 24 feet long. A was the floor plan, and if Kyle was with me, I could almost see us making that work. Uh, it's a really, really smart floor plan as compared to the um, the Bolt uh, by Winnebago floor plan that I am um, familiar with. So, all right, let's shift gears just a little bit. How are we doing on time? So 15 minutes. So um, you guys, again, need to help me out here a little bit. So I'll make recommendations, but this is really about us sharing together. So this is Scott's viewer recommendation of the week because I didn't get any um, from you. Um, so uh, what I'm recommending, so I've had a lot of people touring the van lately, and they're like, how do you make all this stuff stick? And I'm like, well, it's two magic things called Velcro 
and this mounting tape. So I'm putting them up here. If you're recently getting your van, um, I would be putting these in your in your junk drawer, in the van itself, and it is just the best stuff for making things stick to the walls, to the horizontal surfaces. Um, I did a video on this on showing how this stuff works. So again, if you're getting your van, some of you are just getting your vans and you're personalize it a little bit, you don't have to go as crazy as I do, um, get these two substances and they will make your van life way more easy. Um, and they're very removable. Uh, command hooks uh, are another one, but these, everybody knows about command hooks, but these two are super, super important, I think. And I think that rolls into, uh, let's do song of the week. Um, so I need your, need your help here. Um, so get your recommendations. I have a special email box set up. Um, it's GS, let me zoom in here so you can see it. Um, it's GSLL viewer recommendation at gmail.com. Um, so flood that with song of the week, pet pick of the week, uh, your recommendations. Some of the best recommendations literally have come from you. And I adopt those. I have two sections on my website where you can, um, uh, see the stuff that I'm actually using. Some of them based again on your recommendations, and other another uh, site where there's a portion of the page where there's recommendations that I have not tried, so I haven't like personally endorsed those yet. But here's song of the week. Um, this got served up by Apple Music here recently for me, and uh, there's a huge typo there. It's out with it's, the song title is "Without You." It's by Harry Nilsson. and according to the um, kind of bio on this guy, the Beatles that was one of their the Beatles' favorite guys. Uh, and if this is, it's such a haunting, in a good way, song for me. I just can't get this song out of my head. And this guy's voice was amazing. And he had a lot of hits. Um, you get on Apple Music, a lot of times they have the Essentials album. And if you go through his hits, he had a lot of hits. But if you haven't listened to this song in a while or ever, spin up your music service and take a listen to this song, Without You, by Harry Nilsson. And I think you will play it more than once. It is really, really a superb song. I love it a lot. I've been listening to it all day. Um, all right, let's see. A few more questions in here. And can you believe we're almost top of the hour? I don't know how this hour just flies by. Um, thumb up. You're getting anything out of it? I think I saw just over 100 people uh, for the live thing. That is so awesome. This is definitely uh, getting quite a following. And I really, really appreciate that. I'm just so excited for... Um, everything that's going on we're working really hard to get great content out for you and all these great meetups and uh, roundups the van Berees. um an audience member mentioned a couple of places um this was tim and kim out of fort worth um hooked me up with a site in colorado i hope the um timing works um but wouldn't it be great to get some land that we could use for a weekend and just have a camp out no no fees and just have a big bonfire and just, just sheer van life. It's just so cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, and David's got a good point. Amazing how much these cost. He's talking about the 24X by Airstream. Um, now you have to realize it comes with a, it starts with a very expensive van, you know, probably 70 grand just for the van by itself. So you got to add in, you know, all the cabinetry and the wiring and on labor and R&D and crash testing, all that stuff. But yeah, approaching, you know, a quarter million bucks for one of these things. You can have two Travados for that, <laughs> for sure. Oh my God, his and hers, hers and hers, his and hers, his and his. Uh, tra Travados, um, pretty funny. Um, oh, speaking of some great vans, so Tammy and Roland from Forest Park. That's cool. I love Forest Park. I really do miss. Uh, that's such a great village. Um, waiting for their stealth mode. Ooh, order in February. Congratulations. Um, Here's a good question from Live Work Live. Uh, what's one thing you wish you knew when you started your YouTube channel? Um, it's a long game, and it is a lot of work. It's a big responsibility. It um, has given me a lot and has allowed me to stand on the shoulders of... Um, those that were before me, and we talk. I've talked about this. Like keep, keep your daydream, um, the Russos, less jump, more journey. Um, what I wished I knew before I started: um, don't buy all the fancy camera gear. I spent literally like three thousand dollars on camera gear that I ended up shipping it all back to home base. The FedEx 
um, summarily lost. Thank God I insured it for two grand. Um, so I would say not get wrapped up. Um, I wouldn't get wrapped up on all the um, all the gear and get a little bit better at storytelling. Um, I think as part of the Route 66 and more travel videos coming up, I'm going to have to really change my game on storytelling to make it interesting and make shorter videos. Um, but I'm, I, uh, I'm, I'm very glad I did it. Um, I would not recommend doing it unless you're really serious about it and are really committed to it. Um, but a lot, it's brought me so much joy. Even though in my burned out video, I mean, I was burned out. It's, it's a lot of work. and. Uh, I'm glad to have a little bit of a break, but I'm just it's just such a great medium and you think about the miracle really of YouTube with a Gmail account And an iPhone or smartphone with a good camera. You're literally in the broadcast business You're in the media business and that is really amazing um, A lot of responsibility and uh, check out camo Dave. I, he's building a YouTube channel I've talked about other YouTube channels. I thought it was kind of fascinating. Camo Dave, just Google him up or you know search on YouTube. Um, what's the one thing you wish you knew when you started your channel? It, it's just a long game, and um, don't buy all the expensive gear. I fell for that trap. <laughs> That's what I would wish I knew. Um, let's see, a few more questions. Let's see, coming in here, coming in hot. That's a great song by Adam Lambert. Uh, uh, yeah, that uh, that van uh, does have the four x four and six wheels, so six all-terrain tires. That's pretty amazing. Um, hey, thanks for that. A thumb up, yeah, and it's thumb ups for you. 105 folks, this is great. Uh, it's how much about you, right? Uh, I'm trying to bring you some additional stuff versus um, just kind of a uh, talking head. Um, uh, I got a special announcement. It's heard only here tonight. Um, so Kyle's going to join me. He's flying in from Florida into Chicago next week, and he's going to join me for the first um, week or two. We're not really sure which. Um, certainly a week uh, as we start Route 66. So for those of you around um, our, our, meet, our roundups, our, our caravans, you're going to get to meet Kyle. We're going to do uh, two dudes minus a cat in the van. <laughs> it's going to be quite a... Quite a situation. I asked him to leave his suitcase at home and bring a duffel bag. Actually, a garbage bag with his clothes because I've cleared out space for him. It's really going to be great. So, really excited about that. You get to meet him. Um, yeah, My Gypsy Adventure. Um, it's really a must-do. It just, it was so, such an amazing, um, and there's like three components. There's the there's the, the Rouge factory where they actually build cars. I have not, I did not do that. I uh, just fl flat out ran out of time. And then there's the Museum of Innovation where the Kennedy car the Rosa bus and the um, candy, uh, the Lincoln chair are, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. And there's this village. So Henry Ford actually assembled all this village from his time frame, like the 1890s and 1920s, and it's all f the exact buildings just you know sh brought over, shipped over, um, like um, um, Edison's lab from New Jersey. They actually trained in New Jersey dirt where these buildings were. So the buildings are literally sitting on New Jersey dirt and they reassembled the buildings. It was it was probably the best museum. I would argue better than, I've been to the Smithsonian in DC. I would say it's better in some ways than that. It was really over the top. Um, so yeah, go to Detroit, Dearborn, Michigan. And, um, and by the way, hot tip, it's a desert for Harvest House and um, Boondockers Welcome. It's weird. Um, the town peddler is about the only place around there. It was so bizarre. There's a couple places I run into that are just deserts, uh, meaning none. <laughs> the Harvest Hosts or Boondockers Welcome. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. Give me lots of mission. That's what we do out here. Um, yeah, you got it, Sherry. It's not that far for you. Um, and you got to go. It's just the most amazing thing. Um, here's a hot tip. I'll put this in the video. Um, again, they have kind of three museum campuses, campi, whatever. Um, and they're like 25 to 50 35 dollars per campus um which gets pretty expensive really fast so what i did and they're really kind of pushing it is bought a membership the membership was 65 bucks so now i can go back as much time as i want for at least a year right and um if i circle back through in the spring uh we're going to do some stuff around that museum because it is just over the top so watch the prices and uh, check out the membership and that's the way i roll because i saved a ton of money um, getting access to all three for 65 bucks where I would have had to pay um, if I went to all three close to a hundred dollars so yes David um, let me show you this quick you guys will get a laugh where's my book 
Um, so part of the journey here is is getting cool in odd places, right? Secret things for Route 66. I mean, I want to see the obvious stuff that everybody's seen, but I want to get some. And what I've done is I actually coded these by where the states are. And Oklahoma has so, to your point here, so many Route 66 iconic stops. I can't believe it. So I'm trying to make a list. I mean, this is how serious we're getting on this thing, right? And um, it is a lot of work, but I'm really excited. But Oklahoma has by far the most, um, according to this book on the, on the weird stuff. Um, so yes, you're exactly right, David. Thank you for sharing that. A few more minutes to go. Let's see what other questions you folks have, and then we'll round out. Um, Steve, yes. Yeah, so Spokane Steve, thank you. Um, so if you're an Elks member, I have heard this. I am not a member, but Elks and maybe the other clubs too. Moose. Um, what else? Eagle. Is there Eagles? Um, Elks. Moose. Yeah, have an RV RV program. So if you're an Elks member, according to Steve, you can. Um, they have a program there. So this is great. Thank you. Steve is still patiently waiting for his his GL. Um, hopefully, you will get it before I get to Spokane, Steve, which is going to be probably August, uh, early September. Um, I am so excited. I I just I'm so excited. Um, the route plan we've shared that. Uh, so as I come out of Seattle, we're going to do Yakima Wine Valley Harvest Hosting. We're going to make a caravan out of that. So stay tuned. It's probably going to be in um, middle of September, something like that, and. Um, Washington wines are really famous, right up there for certain varieties like Pinots, um, right up there against um, California, and it is an amazing wine country. Um, so stay, I'm just so excited. There's so much going on. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's funny. So Al, uh, Ken here is talking about some local um, local places. Yeah, Al's over in Forest Park and. Uh, at Louise is in, in Forest uh, Oak Park, and then um, Al's is in the Louise in Forest Park. Um, uh, oh, look at this, Trevor! Thank, thank you. Faithful Parking webpage for church parking. I'll take a screenshot of that. We'll check that out. I love that idea. I love that idea. Um, maybe we can go to church one day. I don't know. <laughs> that would be kind of interesting. Um, Faithful Parking. Let's check that out. Um, so everybody, zoom in and, ch and, and see what that's about. If that's the program you're talking about, I just love this idea. Let's support. It's a small business, right? I mean, they're they're saving souls, and let's um, support the cause. And uh, just filled with great people. Um, you know, Sherry is uh, right here. Is is um, got a real cause around uh, her passions around kids, and um, it's really a great way to roll. I just love this idea. So um, this is why we do these things. This is exactly why we do these things. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up Wednesday? We're, we're learning together here real time. Uh, Coffee for me says the harvest host of churches, reserve and pay online. So apparently that is, um, yeah, Sherry said let's do a Van Bury, uh in a church parking lot. Um, I think that'd be cool. I think that maybe even do a little charity project, right? Um, for them. I think that'd be so cool. Um, you know, maybe they have like a, Back in the day when I uh, lived in Seattle, um, the cathedral there, which is a beautiful cathedral, downtown Chicago, uh, Chicago, downtown Seattle, St. James Cathedral, they had a homeless shelter overnight, and I used to volunteer there. So maybe could do a Vanbury in the church parking lot and then help out with the shelter overnight. Um, that would be really cool. I would really get into that. Great ideas. You folks are so amazing. I just love it. Um, Let's see, looking for questions. Oh, I just saw one here, Michael Clark. Uh, um, so Michael's wanting to know about the ETA on when we'll get to the southwest leg of Route 66. Um, so interesting, there's only like five states, and it's only like a 1,000 miles. So I thought it was just grandiose mileage. Um, they're covering a lot of territory. Let's be honest, Oklahoma's kind of a long state. So is Texas, um, Arizona. Um, so I'm expecting to take about a month. Um, so if we leave uh, next week, we'll probably be in California by mid um, mid August, with kind of the Texas and um, Arizona kind of end of July, early August. Uh, we'll see how far we get, how fast we go. Um, it's not a race, um, but I do have a little bit of a. If you can, you know, you've seen my route plan, so um, I do have a lot of ground to cover before the end of the year. That's the plan. So stay tuned um, on that. Let's see. Let's look over here. So let's look at the pet pick of the week, and we'll just go a few minutes over. Um, so I'm curious, how many of you recognize this dog and this channel? 
So this is Fandemic. Oh man, I typo on there. I typo, typo, typo too fast. Um, this is from Vandemic. Uh, made the su su uh, submission here. This is Cruise. It says Bulldog. That is the dog of Van City Van Life. The dude's name is Chrome. How many of you follow his channel? He's got 153,000 subscribers. I followed, found him at about 50,000, so he is just he was like a video a day he lives full time out of his van like one of the small vans um, like a Ford it's a Chevy I think um, I mean it's not a van like a ProMaster Transit or Sprinter it's a van van and um, he's decked he's a cool I, I can't wait for a can to open up so we can meet that guy uh, if I'm in a sad bad mood I actually spin up one of his and if you watch his videos it just takes me out of my bad mood Kind of like Fierce Bueller's Day Off. If I'm in a bad mood, I watch that movie and I'm instantly in a good mood. And uh, so thank you, Vandemic. And uh, look at this uh, way this dog is actually sleeping. <laughs> He's got his butt against the window and is uh, and he drooling everywhere. And uh, yeah, Cruzy Bear. Oh my gosh, so funny. I just love that guy's channel. He is just a cool cat. I can't wait to meet him someday. Um, maybe we'll have him on as a guest. What if he'd be a guest on What's Up Wednesday? What do you think? Um, so thank you for that pet pick of the week. Again, this is about your stuff. So send them in. I know you got pets out there. And um, let me zoom in here so you can get the email address. It's gsllviewerrecommendation at gmail.com. Um, we are definitely getting another cat either in um, when I get to Washington State at my parents' house or back in, in Florida at the end of the year. Um, I just can't believe what a difference having uh, Luke uh, our cat with us made a difference, so I know RVing with pets is such a huge deal. Um, uh, yeah, wonderful news about Kyle. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Um, and he can help navigate because, you know, I haven't figured out actually how I'm going to find Route 66. <laughs> so I'm going to get my paper map out. It's pretty embarrassing, but you just can't type in Route 66, right? And there's probably apps. And so if you have any suggestions on that, please let me know. I'm trying to do my best. Um, uh, so Karen's got just a couple more questions here and we'll do a sign off. So we'll give about 10 more minutes. Uh, question here from Karen Boondockers. Any weird experiences staying in a, definitely a stranger, at least at first, uh, yard? No. Uh, everything's been super cool, really delightful, very safe, very, um, again, just setting expectations on, on the interaction and, again, just kind of over communicating what my plans are, you know, roll out in the morning do my stuff, come back in the day, um, and uh, no, no issues, and um, it's really been a lovely, and that's why I'm doing it more, because it's really free, <laughs> it's so cool, you meet cool people, and they're fellow RVers, they love the van, they love the vans because they're small, there's no generators, right, well, if you have a generator, that's fine too, um, although some do say no generators, because um, you're parked next to my house, I don't want to hear it, but um, no, to answer you, no, no weird experiences. And I will say, though, I had to get used to staying on somebody's property. That was my issue, not theirs. And by just, again, um, showing respect, getting a little bit of interaction, a little conversation going, that of you know, invading their privacy has really subsided. Um, so I've just kind of bucked it up because it's part of the way I roll now. And uh, I just have had great, great experiences. And it's just the overlaying of the two. Harvest House, Boondockers, Little Cracker Barrel, stay to KOA every you know, fifth or sixth day. And I just, it's really lessened my tension, uh, my stress. When I street camped um, and, and things of that nature, um, it was really a lousy night's sleep. And so by staying someplace where I can, where it's safe, quiet, I, I'm approved to stay there. It's just reduced my stress. And I sleep so much better. And I'm you know, getting wrinkles and older more fast than I should be anyway. So... Um, great question. Sherry likes my tabs in my book. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I'm taking this really seriously. Um, let's see if we can find one really fast here. Uh, so this is in Kansas. Oh, no, that's, this is... Uh, yeah, this is in Baxter Springs, Kansas. So um, apparently there's a bunch of stuff, weird stuff about robberies. I mean, just really off-the-wall stuff. Ghosts. Um, you know, here's how to murder in a town. You guys see that? It's just like, what is this stuff all about? This is in Missouri. Um, you know, it's just, it's some of the craziest stuff. 
um, I'm just super, super excited. Here's um, Two Guns Miller. <laughs> it's just some of the wackiest stuff. And some of it's not actually on the route, but it drives by, and there's a history tie-in. So shout out to the authors, Jim Ross and Shelly, Shelly? Graham? Um, so I bought this. I normally don't do hardcover books, but you can see why I did. Um, <laughs> so it's super cool. I'm really, really excited. Uh, great question, Karen. Oh, go for a few more minutes. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> that's cheap. Oh, we're not going to show that. Uh, let's see. The that's kind of funny though. Uh, hypocrites, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so Steve. Um, um, oops, we did that one already. Sorry. And yeah, Chrome. So yeah, if you haven't checked out uh, Cruises, it's really Cruises site, right? Um, Cruises the uh, the dog. And Chrome is the guy. Uh, he's just the coolest cat. Subscribe to his channel. Um, he's really, really cool. Uh, you gotta love Cruzy Bear. And he's like building out this ambulance now or something. Didn't he buy a new van? Um, I get to him every every now and again. Um, uh, Michael Travers corrected me. There's eight states. So we're traveling eight states in a month. Um, a little over a thousand miles. I'm really excited. In the dead of summer. I'm getting a little bit more like Ginger Walkabout, which is she doesn't travel in her van in the summertime because it's really hot. Oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> yeah, building out an ambulance, that's what I thought. Which will be a huge upgrade for him. More spacing and stand up. I just can't imagine being in a van that you can't stand up. It just boggles my mind. Um, so it looks like we've come to our end. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we the mooch docking, we talked about that. And you're right, Michael. Um, is staying with friends and if you have a, a, a Volta system for sure a good lithium system uh, you can plug in um, and amp down you know, reduce the amperage coming into the van so you're not tripping breakers in their garage and what I found is 10 amps is the sweet spot to allow you to run the air conditioner not consume the energy pack and when the compressor is not running um, then you're actually adding to the into the energy pack and you're not taxing their circuit um, so yeah, mooch docking is really um, really great way to roll and if you have a YouTube channel and YouTube members um, invite you over I call it audience angels and that's um, <laughs> I just love that I just love hanging out with you it's just so great um, all right so two more yeah so uh, live or live you have an end game uh, plan to retire from nomad life or a day at a time I have no plan to retire this at all I feels like I'm just getting going to be honest and if we get Kyle uh, in here a, a little bit more, that'd be great. Um, or roll around uh, in our vans um, separately, but together, that would be great. There's just so much, it's just so much fun. I just, I've got this new rhythm now, Harvest Hose, um, you know, Boondog's Welcome, we've talked about that. So I have a really nice rhythm now. And as I go along the route, we're doing Volta trainings. Um, and it's less wear and tear on me. We've talked about the van. The van is my sweet spot right now. Um, in terms of um, it's just hitting all the all, all cylinders are hitting so no real plans I just I am just having a ball you know th two three years down the road who knows I'd love to take this to Europe that's that was, that was a goal I had right from the start we'll see if we get there um, I'd love to run Lily around over in France and Germany and Austria and, oh my goodness uh, England Oh, that'd be kind of weird because you have to drive on the other side of the road. Um, so yeah, it's, it's 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 one day at a time for sure. But you know, clearly we're booked out through the end of the year, and it's a rinse and repeat in 2022. Um, no plans to change. You know, I got my job. You know, my my Volta duties, my embassy duties, the channel. So it's it's really working for me. Um, I don't want a bigger RV. I don't want a smaller RV. You know, it's just everything's just really working. It's just getting um, content out for YouTube is kind of my my big thing. Um, so we're focusing on that. Great question. Thank you for asking. Um, so this will be the last question for the night. Um, so Angry Bubba, thank you for asking this because I don't have a good... I've been searching and I can't really find this. So his question, are, are there um, there are a couple of apps for Route 66 navigation maps. Um, if that's a statement, then um, hit me up. Um, go small, live large at gmail.com um, or the GS. LL viewer recommendation at Gmail and let me know what those are. I'll take a snapshot of this so I don't forget. Um, I've been searching, haven't really found one. There's a lot of websites, um, but I need something kind of in navigation. Um, road trippers, I spoke with them. You're gonna be seeing some stuff coming about road trippers. They actually have a, a, a kind of an itinerary, and um, so that's what I'll be using. 
and paper maps and just trying you know to tag the the, the navigation app apple maps to not take highways which is interstates so that will force me to look at the um, route, C route 66 but it's not super uh, obvious for me so if you know of anything like that let us know and um, I would love to know that very much okay uh, okay, last question. Deborah Ann, sorry about that. I did not see it. Um, did you see my question about the mice? <clears throat> I did not see your question about the mice. Um, I've never had a mouse problem. I've had spiders in here lately. That's been my big thing. Which I actually don't mind if they stay in the corner because they kind of are getting some of the flying bugs, which I really am not a big fan of. But um, I've never had a mouse in here or mice problems. I'm on the move probably too often. And certainly with Luke in here or Cat, um, I don't think uh, they could probably sense him in here and around the vehicle. So I don't think I think he did a lot to um, discourage uh, taking on some four-legged furry friends that we don't want in here, which would be mice. So if there's a specific question, um, I'm sorry I missed it. Um, I was looking for the uh, three question uh, asterisk with three question marks. So apologies. All right, folks, so with that, we are going to say um, thank you and uh, another great show. Thanks for everybody that uh, tuned in the live session. Thanks for watching the, uh, the replay. Thumb up if you got anything out of it. Sure appreciate that. Comment below. You can always comment after these uh, posts live. And new video on Sunday. We're doing a, a roundup at Forest Park uh, Saturday morning, July 10, 9 a.m., having breakfast. And then I got a couple other ideas. If we get crazy, we can go do those. Um, there's a lot of history in the Forest Park and Oak Park, Illinois area. Um, and then on the 15th, we're meeting um, in Pontiac, Illinois, and we're caravanning to Springfield. We're going to stop at the Lincoln Tomb as part of that because uh, it's a little outside Springfield. Then we're going to um, park at the um, Springfield Beer Company where we're going to do a roundup. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you're in any of those places, um, particularly the start point Pontiac or the end point as a roundup, um, go to uh, my website and sign up for the um, event right so I just know who's coming and whom to expect. We don't want to leave anybody behind. So with that, we say thank you again. Another week went by, episode 26. We are half a year into What's Up Wednesday. So amazing to think about. And thanks to you, it's really a lot of fun for me. And um, we learned together tonight about the church parking lots. That's what this is about. Uh, I don't know everything, but I do know that um, you are so uh, important to me and just thank you for everything you do for me. So uh, thank you very much. And with that, we say bye-bye until next week and see you on the small screen in between. Journey on.